of these reels is not like the others. What is up guys, Mystery Angler back at it again with a slightly different topic today. So one of these reels is not like the others. And if you guys didn't figure that out from the intro, it's not that I do it's not that I don't normally use Shimano. I love Shimano. So the different reel is right here. This is an Elfas CTSV by Daiwa. It runs 7.2 gear ratio. And it is a right hand crank. Nani? So, <clears throat> a little bit of backstory. I have never used right hand crank reels in my life. Like, from the day I started fishing, I decided that since my right hand was stronger, I would cast with the right and I would retrieve with the left. And that's how it's always been for me. Like, it's just been the most natural thing. However, like, all of that changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when Fire Nation attacked. I'm just kidding. So, basically the reason why I have this reel with me now is because one of the local attacker shops was having a big, big discount. And like, I was really tempted. I clicked on the link and it was only right hand. I had two choices because I really needed a BFS reel. I could have, I could have um, ordered the same reel in left hand from uh, Black or from Japan Tackle and pay roughly 380 SGD for it, or I could have sprung for the right hand in a gear ratio of my choice and paid 250 dollars for it. The choice was pretty obvious. So, uh, all right. So the star of the show, the Daiwa CTSV, I believe it's the CTSV 70. Yeah, it is. It says here CTSV 70. Um, a little bit of a quick uh, first look at the reel. Um, it runs the Daiwa SV spool, so it is really good for casting. It's really really good for casting like this. Uh, get a lot of that clutch sound. Sounds so solid. Feels so nice. It's also running Daiwa's uh, air brake system. For those of you that um, haven't really fished with me before, you all might not know this, but actually in terms of braking systems, I really really prefer the system that Daiwa has in place and perfected compared to the system that Shimano has perfected because I find that just based on pure casting feel, um, Daiwa's Mac 4Z and Daiwa's air brake system suit my casting style the best because the modulation of the brake force on the spool is um, proportional to how fast your spool is going and it's I just find that the Daiwa air brake and Mac Force technology is really really uh, predictable throughout all stages of throughout all stages of the cast. For those of you that have used the old um, Zillion series like before TWS before Max for those of you that have used the old Zillion series for those of you that have used the Ryoga, the old Ryoga uh, 1016 and 2020 for those of you that have used the Z2020 you all know you all know in your heart how effective Mac 4Z is. And I'm not plugging for Daiwa, but I have to say that um, Mac 4Z is definitely one of the better braking systems that have ever been debuted. Another special thing about this reel is... Okay, if I can just get the line through... Alright, so... A cool thing about this reel that's really special... Check out the level line when the drag is going up. Hang on. Cool thing about this reel, check out the line when the drag is going. Okay, one more time. It is a partial non disengaging level one. So when you cast the level one, still remains still. Sorry. So when you cast the level one, still remains still. But when you um, get a big fish and the fish is pulling drag, the level one will actually track with the line across the spool. Um, and it will prevent your line from having sharp angles. And I think that in a normal casting reel with a normal size spool, it isn't too much of an issue. But when you're working with reels that have very wide spools, or when you're working with reels that you want to run very, very thin line on, um, you cannot afford to have that. You cannot afford to have those sharp angles between the line and the level one. So having a level one that follows your line as the drag goes out, um, I find it's a really, really nice touch. And um, yeah, that one engineers, really thought this reel out well um, yeah so that's all I have to say for this reel's first look great great reel for the price that I got it at 
um, it feels really great in the hand even though it's not the hand crank that I normally use um, it still feels really really good and I have a good feeling about this reel and after I get back to after we get back to fishing like as a nation together after we get back to fishing I will deliver a more detailed uh, reel check and reel review after maybe 2-3 to three months of use so yeah um, that's the review on the Alpha CTSV. So now on to the main topic of the video. Right hand crank, left hand crank, and how to become an electric. Yeah. So um, we we'll start off with reasons why you might want to train yourself to be ambidextrous when using fishing reels, like in the context of fishing reels. So for those of you that um, know a little bit more of your fishing history. You all will know that up until recently, okay, not really recently. Um, recently, left hand reels have become very readily available. Okay, so it's like it's most reels are made in a uh, left hand configuration as well as a right hand configuration, unless the reels have a very very limited running. Even then, um, ninety nine percent of the time you will be able to find a left hand crank reel in the model of your choosing. However, um, back when back when big casters first came out. Uh, factories only produce right hand reels factories um, because the machining for left and right hand reels is uh, slightly different certain screws are threaded different ways um, the gears have to be cut differently in some cases so it was more prudent for factories to only produce a single crank like a single side of reel and um, that happened to be right hand so a lot of anglers started um, a lot of anglers actually did for those of us the majority of the world is right handed right that's a fact. So a lot of anglers would right hand cast, then they would left hand palm and right hand crank. Or they would cast and turn the reel upside down and crank backwards. But that's like really really OG shit. Like you won't see anybody doing that anymore. Then when left hand reels came out, since the majority of those was right handed, people would right hand cast, left hand crank. And you, with, with right hand cast, right hand crank, you have this. You have, you have this little moment of passing the reel to your left hand and clicking shut and that little moment if in that little moment you get a fish well um, for those of you that do uh, right hand right hand you all know um, sometimes that little moment can be the difference between a good hookup and a lost fish so when left hand reels came about and the majority of the world was casting with their right hand like people would do this and it's just a really really comfortable way to fish it's the way island deals a big caster um, and yeah i think there's nothing wrong with that system but Definitely, I think the time has come for me to try to teach myself to be ambidextrous. And the reasons, the number one reason why you might want to do that is because the reels that you find in the market that tend to go for cheaper prices tend to be right hand. Or who knows, you might be somebody who um, left cast and right cranks. Or you might be somebody who normally right cast, right cranks, and you have trained like that since you started fishing. And you see a reel that you really, really like. But it's only available in left hand. So this advice applies to you as well. The second reason that you might want to learn how to crank with your non-dominant hand is because certain reels are still only made in the right hand configuration. Uh, one reel that immediately comes to mind is the Shimano Teleka 2 Speed Series. It's a really really amazing reel for snowfall, uh, great reel for jigging, great reel for bottom fishing but it was only ever made in the right hand configuration. Um, older reels like the Shimano Corrado 200 E5 were only made in the right hand configuration. So it, it is prudent to learn um, how to crank with both hands so that no reel on the market is off limits to you. And third, and uh, this reason was actually made clear to me by um, Fred Go of Rapala. So big shout out to Fred for uh, shedding some light on this uh, info for me. Um, do check out Fred's channel, uh, Fred Go's Fish and Cook. I think he delivers some really, really informative content and he's one of the most down to earth, most humble guys in the Singapore fishing community, he told me that when you come to certain spots and the cover is very very tight for so example let's say this is a piece of cover I'm gonna move this out of the way for now so let's say for example this is a piece of cover and you're approaching you're approaching this piece of cover from um, further back like where let, let's say this is 30 meters away from me and you need to get you need to get your lure around the cover behind into the pocket all right so one approach to the cover definitely would be casting with your uh, dominant hand. You cast right, your layer flies around to hit the cover on this edge. Another way is that you can backhand cast in behind to the left side of the cover. 
But I think that y'all know that when you're cast, um, you have a certain cast position that tends to be a bit stronger for you. So for me personally, my outside cast is a lot stronger. My outside cast is a lot stronger than my backhand cast. So I cannot, so a lot of the time, this avenue is not available to me. But if you learn to cast with the other hand and your, you learn how to outside cast with your left, you can definitely bring your leg around to cover this up the cover as well. So if you can cast with both hands, right? If you can cast with both hands, you know almost no structure will be off limits to you.